This video is going to contain spoilers from the off, so I'm warning you now. The Penguin returned this week with episode 5 of the show, and we saw that quite literally everything was going wrong for Oz, and he was losing grasp on the control that he thought he had. But on the flip side, Sophia was forging alliances and ensuring her father's name stopped with his death, as her empire was going to be far removed from how he would have wanted it to be. Sophia Giganti was born in this episode, and in this instance, the Falcons doing two wrongs did in fact make a right. By wronging the Moronis and by wronging Sophia, an alliance was born, and together, the both of them had Oz as their number one target. With an ending that gave Oz his one moment of triumph and the potential for his future to not be as gloomy as it once seemed, let's delve right into the episode and break down all that there was to take away from it. Here is the Penguin Episode 5 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This was an episode of two halves in the sense that we saw Oz's demise and everything quite literally going wrong for him and him losing the love from the two people that he got comfort and reassurance from, his mother and Eve. Plus, we also saw Sophia's rise in building a new empire under a completely different name whilst she formed an alliance with somebody that she once had a large feud with. Let's first start by looking at Oz's demise. I actually thought this was going to be an episode where Oz actually had a level of success. However, it went in the complete opposite direction. Following the Moronis taking the truckload of bliss, he saw their son and next in line to the Moroni Empire, Taj, as a way of using something as leverage. So he kidnapped him and demanded the mushrooms back in return for their son. This was essentially the beginning of the end for Oz in this episode and his plan completely backfiring. As well as demanding the mushrooms to be returned, he also requested for Sal to be killed in prison. However, that didn't end up going through as Sal took the keys off the guard and managed to escape. That was the big first error from Oz. The second error? Well, that was burning Taj and Nadia alive when she tried to set Oz up and have him killed inside of the garage. Due to the flames and smoke, it triggered the alarm and it meant that all of the mushrooms apart from the two buckets were destroyed. So it was almost as if Nadia's death and Taj's death and poking the bear which was Sal was for nothing, as he's now in a worse off position. What was particularly interesting about the death of Nadia and Taj was the way that Oz just stood there completely still and watched the both of them get cooked alive and die slowly. We've seen Oz kill before, but there was something about this one. Something menacing and almost haunting about the way that he was just staring at them in their final moments. It was a slow and torturous way to die, and it's as if he took pleasure in it. The slight smile, it was just evil. The tables were turned in this moment from two episodes back where he was once looking down the barrel of a gun at the hands of Nadia. Now, he was looking at her slowly dying and feeling as if he had the upper hand, and he felt that he was one step closer to the top, smiling, even though there were consequences that were to come if Sal wasn't dead. With Sal breaking out of prison, it meant that Oz had royally messed up as the only piece of leverage that could be used against Oz was his mother, who was sick, and he obviously loved his mother dearly. This was a mother that he'd essentially promised the world and a penthouse to, but now it meant that he had to take her out of her home and back to the east side, a place which brought back haunting memories for her because it was where her two other sons died. He'd almost made her regress rather than progress like he promised. Hence why she told Oz to get away from her when she was lying down in bed. She felt as though he hadn't done a good job in taking care of her, something that he'd promised he'd always do. Oz has brought trouble to his mother by killing the Moronis, and he also brought trouble to Eve, the other woman in his life, by parading her and her girls in front of Sophia Giganti and making her fully aware that they were working with Oz. With Sophia now knowing that Oz was responsible for the death of her brother, Eve feared that she could become a target of some kind, hence why she wanted to walk away from Oz and said that she wasn't going to go with him. In one singular episode, Oz lost the two people that provided him some form of comfort and an element of safety. The only thing that went well for him in this episode was right at the end where he opened a jar of coins that himself and his brothers used to collect, and within it there was a coin that was almost in honour of the underground trolleys, a project in place that had been abandoned by the city, but when Oz went down there, he realised that it was the perfect conditions for him to be able to grow bliss. There was almost a sense of a full circle moment with that, Oz needed to return to the place that pretty much broke his family, a place below ground, hidden away and forgotten, for him to be able to build his empire and eventually rise to the surface and get on top. So we're going to be seeing his operation getting underway in the next episode. There was a moment where we saw that Squid was present around Crown Point, looting and taking whatever he could find. 
He even caught a glimpse of Victor and Oz's mother as they were going into the building. We know from episode 3 that Squid is somebody that causes trouble, and I feel like he could potentially end up going to the underground trolleys, or breaking into the apartment to loot some goods, and Oz's mother could get caught up in it. This would mean that it wouldn't end well for Squid. There was an emphasis on this part of the city being cursed, and that it had the ability of taking everything from an individual. I think it's going to be the part of the city where Oz does rise to the top, but he could end up losing his mother. It's almost as if that's going to be part of the cost, and Oz is going to take on the curse. Sophia's Rise Unlike Oz, Sophia had a completely different trajectory in this episode. Following her murdering each and every one of her family members, other than Johnny Vitti in the previous episode, the police had arrived and they were investigating the suspicious circumstances. However, they were almost pleased that the Falcons were wiped out because it was less trouble for them to deal with. Sophia had a well-thought-out plan and it was clearly working, as even though they were suspicious of her, they weren't able to pin it on her. Johnny Vitti was tied up in the room where the plaques that were in honor of the Falcone members that were killed were, and it was in this scene where Johnny showed just how weak of an individual he was around Sophia's father. He mentioned how there was a time that Isabella was going to leave Carmine, and that he arranged a car for her, but she never showed. Plus, he also said how much he loved her. But the sad reality and the inhumane thing about it all was that even though he did love her, he continued to work with Carmine knowing full well what he did to her. I think that's why Sophia ultimately went on to kill Johnny, because he was an untrustworthy individual. Even though he knew a lot of information, it almost wasn't worth the risk for her to keep him alive. He would just get in the way. Plus, he was the last of the Falcon era to still be alive. Sophia wanted to forge her own legacy and empire under the maiden name of her mother, which was Giganti. And by wearing her mother's coat, a person that she said was a force, it showed that she was walking in her mother's shadow and footsteps and doing this all for her. Removing the Falcone name was something that her father would have hated. It's almost like the bloodline stopping with somebody, and the legacy of the Falcones is something that will go on to be forgotten because of exactly that. Her main mission is to essentially be on top, just like Oz, and she knows that she needs to kill Oz to get him out of the way, but also as revenge for him killing her brother. That's why we saw her go to Sal Maroney. She doesn't need a war on two fronts. She knows that if she killed Sal, it would just make it easier for Oz, because it's one less person for him to worry about. Instead, she wanted to use the pain that Sal was going through, something she was familiar with due to her brother, and also grab a hold of the fact that Sal had been wronged by her family, just like she had, and use it to form an alliance so that they could both sit on top together, rather than just being another person that they needed to deal with, and that's exactly what we saw happening. My review of the episode I thought this was a great episode of the show. The show continues to get better week after week, and I just don't know how it keeps on doing it. I'm blown away by Kristen Milioti and the sheer blank expressions that she gives Sofia Giganti, but also the skill of giving so much away at the same time. I don't see Colin Farrell when I'm watching Oswald on screen. The makeup and prosthetics are incredible, yet the personality that Farrell has given the character is just amazing too. We saw a darker side to Oz in this episode, and it transitioned so well. The hunger for power, the struggle when things went wrong, but also the joy when there was quite literally light at the end of the tunnel. Oz is just a character that I'm getting great pleasure in watching on screen. I'm not the biggest watcher of superhero TV shows and movies in the Marvel and DC world, but this show doesn't feel like one at all. Change the name of the characters and you've just got a gang war show on HBO, and that's what I love about it. I also love the fact that the repercussions of the Batman movie are so heavily featured in this show. It's not intrusive, but it's followed on in such a seamless, linear fashion that we're seeing the struggles that the actual people are going through. I can't wait to see Oz build his farm in the next episode, and also how the war on two fronts that he's facing is going to unfold. I fear his mother is going to fall victim to his actions, and if and when that does happen, I imagine we'll see a ruthless side to Oz that probably has no humanity. Honestly, I'm all for that, and I think it's going to be epic. So, there you have it. The Penguin Episode 5 Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos on The Penguin, then click on the card in the top corner. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.